The Ghost Machine books are here, and I'm enjoying them. Rook Exodus this is issue number two. It makes me want to buy another comic book. I have long said and repeated, this is one of the key things that they're getting right in some of the indie books and some of the non-Marvel and DC books. And yeah, Jeff John spent a whole lot of time trying to get us all into Geiger. And it's okay. It's just that we've all been here, done that. We've had several iterations of where Geiger has been. But with Rook, I feel like it's a different world. It's it's stylish. It's interesting, dark, apocalyptic type stuff. If you, if you just didn't get issue number one yet, you're like, listen, I don't know, Pops, whatever. Maybe you can read a copy online. They give us a little summary. Notice that there's books that don't do that anymore. They do here. So let me just read it to you. How's that? A struggling farmer from Earth was given a second chance on the planet Exodus, a terraform world where every aspect of nature is controlled by humanity, including the winged scavengers who plagued his crops. Now called Rook, the farmer became one of the wardens, those who wear helmets capable of commanding an animal species. But when the world's engines failed, the power of the wardens fell in the wrong hands. Those who could afford to fled, forcing those left behind to choose betraying, trying to escape this war-torn world before its destruction or fighting to save it. Previously in Rook, with his spacecraft almost complete, Rook prepares his imminent escape from Exodus, his close friend Swine, Meanwhile, refuses to leave the planet and pays the ultimate price at the deadly hands of the bear warden named Ursaw. So, yes, Jason Fabek does the art, co-creating with Jeff Johns. And it's what you have. You have sort of like this, uh, they come across, you see the wolves. And we had a little tease of this in the last issue, but yeah, here's Dire Wolf. She controls wolves. So we get a little bit of enough of what's been going on, a nice, cool explanation of two or three characters. We immediately see them in action. We see her engage with the wolves to go find Rook. And then we have sort of like a backstory of what he's doing. Because, And I will say this is a little bit of the negative in this book because it's a lot of exposition about what's going on. Him kind of reiterating what was kind of in the synopsis of the death of Swine. But, but I will say initially, the death of Swine in issue number one was actually pretty great. And then, yeah, like I said, he's attacked by this giant turtle. And he has all of his, he gets the thing that he's there to find, but then he's a, he uses his crows to attack the turtles and that buys him some time to use his remote control on this vehicle to crash in and kill the turtle. And it feeds the birds. Maybe it's not your thing, but this is sort of like the rudimentary fundamentals of a good comic book. Intrigue, interesting characters, things that don't go well. The plans are going to unpack and unravel. Um, you understand you see powers in play. You see different things. He, he's always on the verge of failing but he finds a way to overcome it's in an unexpected maneuver or way this is all really good i i'm I'm really really impressed then we kind of like hit the pause button again because dire wolf's going to go find him and then they have the interaction with them and then their backstory about how they basically were a couple at one point those kinds of things and she's and she's you know super hot they got a little thing for each other She's sort of like a company person that has faith in whoever's running Exodus that it can still be restored. People will answer and help these folks. He's already got this ship built that he was working on with Swine. And that's what's going to basically go, well, why don't you just come with me since Swine is dead? She's not up for doing that. Notice that they do things in this book. Like, first off, all the art is intricate. She has scars on her face. He's all scarred up and, you know, he's got facial hair, stubble, things like that. This is not like the hollow entries that we're getting over on some of the other topics and other books. So I I love the art. And then, of course, then you go right into action again as they're attacked. Here's their wolves. But then there's the attack. And then you have Ursaw coming with the bears. And that's going to basically get to a pivot point now where it's going to prevent the plan from playing out the way it will, you know, keeping spoilers off the table for you, what happens. But they do give you a little tease of what issue number three looks like, that kind of thing as well. So we're at a time where we've kind of overestimated the greatness that has to happen. And I think this is more like traditional comic book storytelling. I do think John's probably writing a five issue, six issue, eight issue. You know, he's writing a story arc because he wants to sell graphic novels. He knows the formula to make money and be successful. And there's people that are only graphic, only uh, graphic novel, only people. I, I get that too. So I have to admit, I was sort of like the ending of Rook one kept me totally engaged and got me to like, Hey, I got to get into Rook number two. And I'm like, good. The so world building continues. Characters, our, our heroes are kind of better established now. They're under threat still. The plans are not going. We we're li- literally continue to be an unknown heading into issue number three. It's all perfect for what I want. So I don't know if you guys are reading this or not. Love your thoughts. Thank you for watching. I am Pops.